So we're here at the World Creators Summit with uh, David Israelite, the CEO of the uh, NMPA, the National Music Publishers Association. So hi, David, and great to have you on. How's it going? Great. Thank you for having me. So first of all, let's talk about, uh, for people that may not be familiar with NMPA, just to start with what the NMPA's mission is. Sure. NMPA represents all of the music publishers and songwriters in the United States. And so we advocate on their behalf before Congress, the administration, in court proceedings. And then we do a lot of things related to public relations uh, with regard to songwriters and music publishers. Yeah, absolutely. And so in, in your role, you, you must have witnessed a pretty interesting evolution over the years of the relationship between tech companies and uh, music publishers. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, especially now, music company, uh, music tech companies are starting to really appreciate and understand what the role of publishers is and how to license the rights. But that wasn't always the case. And, and sometimes master rights were all, all almost uh, favorite in, in terms of like people were seeking out master rights before even thinking about publishing. So how has that evolved? And do you feel like people have a better grasp now of, of publishing and, and what that entails and what kind of rights they need to license? I, I think we've made enormous progress, but I do think there's still a lot of work to do. Um, I would say that the relationship between the tech community and the songwriting and music publishing community is one that's evolving. I think that there is a much better appreciation for the rights of songwriters and what needs to be done. Um, but there's still a lot of challenges too. Um, I do feel like we've turned a corner. Um, most of the discussions now are about how much songwriters deserve to be paid from business models, whereas before uh, there was often the fight about whether or not songwriters needed to be paid at all. Yeah. Um, and so we do have a lot of work to do still, but I do think that the relationship has progressed uh, very much in the last several years. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, so looking at uh, um, how the NMPA works with different types of publishers, of course, uh, uh, one of the big uh, issues, but it's also one of the great things about publishing is that anybody can be a publisher, and and, and, and there's so you know 25 plus thousand publishers in, in the United States alone. So how do you deal with all the mass of of, of, of creators and, and of publishers, and uh, you know do you manage to allocate some time for also the the independent side of of, of your community? Sure, it is actually one of the great things about the music publishing community. NMPA yeah. represents all music publishers regardless of size and just about every music publisher is a member of NMPA and so we have the very large members um, like Sony and Universal and Warner and BMG down to the smallest of music publishers that maybe just manage their own catalog of songs. Um, I think there's a common misconception that there are differences between the interests of these large publishers and the smaller publishers. Um, largely, they have the same interest, which is regardless of your size, you're interested in protecting the rights in your song, making sure that your songwriters get paid properly. And that's something that's consistent regardless of the size of the company. And so I found it quite easy to represent all music publishers regardless of size, even though uh, the large ones obviously take up a big chunk of the market. Um, we have a board of directors made up of 18 members um, it's one person, one vote. And so the independent publishers dominate the board of NMPA, even though we work very cooperatively together as a community. Yeah. And, um, and you were also on the, uh, the chair of the Intellectual Property Task Force uh, in uh, the U.S. Department of Justice in 2004, which was looking at ways to protect copyrights uh, and the trademarks and so forth. The music, of course, was a big part of that uh, back, a, back uh, at that time because it was the industry that was possibly the most affected by, by piracy because broadbands weren't as advanced as they are today to affect the mu movie industry quite, quite as much. And, and uh, so this year we're seeing a potential uh, revision of uh, uh, copyright law and uh, we're going to have an address by Maria Palan uh, uh, later today or, or tomorrow uh, ab about that uh, very thing. And so what do you think are the issues that need to be most addressed with a new uh, copyright uh, reform and is are there any potential pitfalls to that as well? Sure. Well, I'm excited about the idea of modernizing the Copyright Act. It's been more than two generations since Congress has done an overhaul of the act and obviously quite a bit has changed. I think there are a lot of opportunities for music publishers and songwriters. For example, with our mechanical reproduction rights right now, we live under a system of compulsory license with a very unfair rate standard for songwriters. We'd like to see that changed. With regard to our performances, we have consent decrees with the Justice Department that largely depress the value of our property. We'd like to see changes in that. Um, and on the larger question about copyright, I do think think that it's time to take a fresh look at some of the things like how it's working with the DMCA takedowns. Um, 
what it means to have fair use, what an orphan work looks like. Uh, but we should not we should never forget that what we're talking about is a property interest. We're talking about a right. And so when people talk about balancing, that's all well and good. But you've got to start with recognizing that you're talking about someone's rights, you're talking about someone's property, and the purpose of that copyright law is to protect in many ways, and that should never be lost. Yeah. And the NMPA is an interesting uh, body because it is based in Washington, and so I wanted to ask you about uh, how important it is to be here and to make sure that the voice of uh, publishers is heard, because for example we've seen uh, technology companies, especially in the last uh, 18 months to two years, step up their lobbying efforts uh, as well on the Hill, and, and do you feel like it is important for you guys to be here and to make sure that publishers are properly represented whenever a bill of this kind comes through so you can express your concerns? Oh, it's extremely important. I mean, my members are based largely in Nashville. New York, Los Angeles, really all around the country. But the purpose of NMPA is to advocate on their interests um, and being here in Washington is key. So we want to make sure that members of Congress, members of the administration understand what music publishing and songwriting is all about. Um, they make sure that they take into account the interests of songwriters. We'll never be the largest lobbying voice. We'll always be the small person in the fight. But we have a unique advantage, which is who we represent. And the voice of one songwriter oftentimes can outweigh the voice of a much larger corporation and that's really our job is to bring those voices here and make sure that people understand what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And as far as uh, collection societies are concerned, uh, uh, one of the big issues that is going to be discussed in the, in, in the, last, in the next couple of days, and it has, has already been discussed in the, in the previous panel here today, was that of direct licenses. So do you think uh, the fact that large publishers like Sony ATV, for example, or, uh, are withdrawing uh, some of the digital rights from uh, ASCAP and BMI, for example, is that affecting the... Uh, rest of the catalog of those services in, in the way in which they can negotiate and, and the power that they have to leverage that catalog to negotiate better deals for their for the writers. Right. Well, let me be clear. ASCAP and BMI do a fantastic job. What's unfortunate is they're asked to play under rules that are unfair. And so what you've ended up with in some situations is a situation where songwriters and music publishers are not being paid fairly because of these unfair rules that are put on ASCAP and BMI. The best example is probably Pandora. In the most recent quarter, Pandora paid record labels and, and recording artists about 57% of their revenue. The songwriters and music publishers got paid about 4 and now Pandora is suing to cut that rate even more. And so the issues with direct licensing, they're not about how good of a job that anyone's doing. ASCAP and BMI do a fabulous job. It's about recognizing that the unfair rules that have been put on these PROs are causing songwriters and music publishers to get paid in some instances unfairly. Yeah. And what my hope is, is that any direct licensing that goes on in a marketplace raises the value of everybody's copyright. Yeah. And if it plays out that way, then I think we're going to look back and think this was a very good and healthy thing that happened to the industry. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, uh, of course, everybody's hope. And uh, uh, looking at the role of some other organizations that have, have, are sitting outside of sort of the, the usual, uh, I guess, uh, uh, to and fro's of the publishing industry, but are becoming very uh, central to some of the digital arrangements that are happening right now. The HFA is uh, one, of such, uh, one of such bodies. And so uh, they've really captured one of the needs of some digital services to be able to reach out to a number of like two, two thousand and a thousand different publishers without having to actually go individually to them and try to get the mechanicals from them. So how do you how do you feel about the roles of, of the HFA and do you think there's going to be potentially other companies that come in and, and try and compete in that space and find find ways to reach out to publishers directly? Right well HFA does a great job although I'm biased if, if folks don't know NMPA owns HFA it's a wholly owned subsidiary but the role that HFA is playing is really leading into the future. Um, we have a challenge as an industry which is if we want to have a success successful digital music environment. We've got to make it so that licensing is easy. Now it's a different question about how much we get paid and we'll probably fight about that. But we shouldn't be fighting about the ability to get licenses to the people that want to use them in a efficient way, in a fast way, in an easy way. And that hasn't been the case. And so what HFA is doing um, is taking the lead on making it so that digital companies can solve their licensing problems in a way that in the past has been a challenge and that's why you've seen things like the deal with YouTube, the deal with some of the major record labels on music videos and some of the other groundbreaking deals that we've done that have allowed digital players to come in and in effect license the whole industry yeah. uh, and it's very important.
Yeah. And uh, uh, finally, what are the NMPA's primary concerns for uh, you know the second half of 2013 and going 2014? Are there any particular uh, subjects that you're keen on, on uh, exploring and, and talking about? Uh, there's so many. Um, with regard to Congress, I think as this copyright revision plays out, it's very important that we protect the interests of songwriters. We'd like to see a more fair payment for songwriters for mechanicals that's governed by Congress. Yeah. We'd like to see the PROs being put in a better place when it comes to their consent decree rate proceedings right now. There are some rules that make it very unfair for them about using market rates when considering how to set their rates. And we want to make sure that we protect copyright in general. The other challenge that I think we have is that as a lot of these digital companies are looking to launch new services, we provide a licensing solution. And so we're very focused on that, partnering with the digital companies and figuring out how to make the marketplace work. Because the truth is, it's not really the government's place to come in and make a business work. It's our responsibility. And if we can do it cooperatively and on a voluntary basis, I think that's the best way to solve a lot of the licensing problems. Great. Well, thanks so much, Dave, for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. It's my pleasure.